So very good morning to you. And um, we are, as you know, that we are now in topic two, which is about the firm valuation and the leverage. The leverage is that, uh, try to understand the story behind leverage. Uh, it's very important that we know the background of this topic. The background is that they used to be, well, they, I won't say they used to be, they're still, I mean, not physically alive, but two very famous uh, economists, they were finance guru, and one's name is Franco Modigliani, and the other one is Merton Miller, and they won the Nobel Prize in economics. I hope you know that the finance is also included in economics, basically, so there's no separate prize. And most of the economics Nobel Prize are basically have gone to the finance people, if I don't exaggerate, right? So what they say, what they say is that a company is like this. Uh, they say that the, a firm is like, uh, goodness me, it's always a thing to, should I? Yeah. Maybe. The first Let's pause. This should get eleven. Okay. Sorry for this uh, technical, uh, comical uh, delay. Um, Franco Modigliani and Merton, Merton Miller. They were having this opinion that a firm is comprising of three components. I think we discussed it. That there's one called financing. The other side of the picture is called operations operations and the third thing uh, which a firm is comprised of is called investing uh, yeah I am recording of these three things if you look at the financing side it shows where money comes from. It's like an input. So operations of a firm are like a machine and you are putting an input. The input is money comes in. Then this money is invested in, in the assets, in the, in the projects. And how well you get the money in and how well you process the money is called operations. So if your cost of financing is 5%, then your operations should be so good that you are able to generate the output more than 5%. So you, it's like a revenue and cost. If your cost of financing is uh, 5%, then your return on investing should be more than 5%. And this is only possible. And if it is true, then it shows that your operations are successful. If your operations are not successful, then uh, your, your return on investing is less than the cost of financing. If you look at these two uh, pillars at the flank, they are in the balance sheet. Financing shows the company's liabilities, where money comes from. Money comes from debt and equity. Investing, where money goes to, money goes to the assets, physical assets, 
financial assets, tangible assets, intangible assets. And where do you show the operations? Operations are more periodic, more regular, and this performance you see in the company's income statement, basically. So it means a company is comprising of three strands, three pillars, three platforms, uh, financing, operations, and investing. Now, the modern economist, and inclu including me, and I've done a lot of research about it, and there are many papers which are, if you want to see my research on this topic, there is a, uh, the students who are in Finland, they, I just, they know that we have all the pieces which we, I, I supervise or everybody else supervise, they are in this database. And it's, it's in English as well. So you can choose a language, English. Okay, and here all my research is available. And one of my research topic is that, does financing have an impact on the company's performance and investing? Okay. And by the way, this, uh, uh, you know, this paper just published very recently, I mean, maybe a few months ago. And this is uh, actually a student's thesis, which we developed into an article. But the, <laughs> that's not my purpose. The purpose is that I is one of, I am one of those researchers uh, who believe that financing is as important as other things. But these two gentlemen uh, made the rest in peace, uh, the soul rest in peace, Franco Modigliani and Merton Miller. They believe that, you know what? They believe like this. They said that, oops. They said that Financing is not important at all. They said, it doesn't matter. If I'm a company CFO, I raise money from equity or debt or only equity or only debt, doesn't matter. Or 50, 50 or 60, 40, 70, 30, no problem at all. And who said this? These two gentlemen who won Nobel prize in economics. They said that financing is just a mirage just a facade, uh, it's not a real, or even I can compare it with like a wrapping paper, that if you want to present something, if you want to give a present to your friend, it's the gift inside the wrapping paper which matters, right? Not the wrapping paper itself. So they are comparing uh, financing as a wrapping paper. That it doesn't matter. The ultimate truth is what you get from the asset side of the balance sheet of the company, not from the liability side. You can be financed by any mean. But in this topic, which we started slightly uh, yesterday, very introductory, uh, we would discuss that no, they are wrong. The leverage, which, because basically your financing come from debt and equity. For Franco Modigliani and Merton Miller, D to E ratio doesn't matter. A company X can be having zero debt and all equity. Company Y could be having 50-50. Company Z can be having 90-10. I didn't put 100 to zero because there's no company which is fully financed by debt unless you have some very shady business. you know some drug trafficking or some selling weapons ab abroad and then making the world more peaceful place to live in. Yeah, so, so in that case, um, yeah, so the debt and equity. Debt equity proportion is basically called leverage. More debt means a company is getting more levered or leveraged Okay, and this debate, this whole thing between debt and equity, you know, this is called capital structure of the firm. So uh, what uh, these two uh, Nobel laureate, 
what they were arguing that the capital structure is irrelevant. In fact, there is a theorem called uh, capital structure irrelevance theory, uh, theorem given by these two gentlemen. We want to disprove them actually. We want to prove them it's not true. Financing do matter. Liability side, sometimes you are not able to generate any value from the asset side, but you are rather generating the value from your uh, liability side. Now imagine, last year, your return on investment was 5%. I'm talking about the, I'm talking in the context of corporate finance when the, com, com, the big company, you know, um, imagine this is an automobile company and last year they produced a return of 10% on assets. This year, the return has gone down to 7% from assets. But then they can generate value from the liability side and make up the loss of 3%. Are you with me? So they can use the liability side as a mechanism to recoup, recover the losses which they have incurred on the asset side. So you can generate value from the firm's liability side as well. This is the key, a rational why we have this topic, otherwise why would we do it? Uh, you will ask me how you can do it. Well, we will, we will study it. But very quickly, I can tell you one simple thing. Uh, I hope you have seen the uh, income statement of the companies. Yeah, I'm sure you have. If you look at the company's income statement, you will find that your finance cost or the interest cost mainly are incurred before the company pay tax. The dividend which you get, if I divide this whole class into shareholders and debt holders, the money which you guys get, the debt holders, uh, that is before the company pay tax. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? The interest cost is always before you pay the income tax. Have you seen or not? If you haven't seen, if you haven't seen, tell it loud, you haven't. I'll show you an example. Have you or have, have you not? Let's assume you have not. Let's assume you have not. So I can go to the actual company report. Why not? Um, if I go to, for example, Finnair, my favorite, not Facebook, Finnair, and if I type Finnair annual report 2019, and we go to the report itself. Sorry, just be patient. I'm trying to get it. You see the word capital structure and financing cost? That's what we're discussing. So capital structure is very important part uh, of the corporate finance of the country, but that, that's not my point to show. My point is something else. Uh, consolidated income statement. So yeah, we need this thing here. Maybe one statement up. Yeah. And let me check if you, can you guys see the, am I sharing it with you? My online friends, can you see it? Maybe not. Let me share the screen with you. Uh, I zoom in a bit more. Okay. Have a look. This is the company's uh, net profit, yeah? This is the profit before taxes, the gross profit. We also call it earnings before, uh, uh, in earnings before tax, yeah? And then, um, or we also call it profit before tax, PBT, or earnings before tax, EAT, EAT. And then we have the results for the period, net profit or 
profit after tax pat uh, and the earnings after tax eat and the results before tax are called gross profit sometimes uh, you also call it um, profit before tax pbt or earnings before tax ebt now here uh, you pay tax before you give the dividend to the shareholders can you see here this money belongs to the owners uh, 74.5 but this 74.5 uh, has been calculated after the company has paid tax but look at the finance expenses the company has paid 83.6 i think I, I don't know how many millions they are we have to see but whatever the unit is uh, the company has paid this money to the debt holders first so first i if i'm the person in charge of finair then i pay you first from the profit then whatever is left then i pay tax and then if something is left from the tax then i give it to you yeah does it make sense yeah or not it means that i can discriminate between the types of uh, financing and the objective of this discrimination is that i am aiming to generate the company's value yeah i may sound bizarre but if i have to make a choice i'm not seeing from very moralistic point of view i'm not thinking from the patriotic point of view i'm not taking from any ideal utopian point of view if i am a very profit centered company ceo i would give more money to my investors rather than the tax man because when i pay tax there is no direct reciprocity i'm not saying that you shouldn't pay tax you should pay but okay don't do that thing don't misunderstand me but my point is that if i see from very very um, not normative point of view but from very uh, positive point of view very realistic and the very greedy point of view let's put it this way i would pay this money to the investor and by the way debt holders are my investors shareholders debt holders both are my investors because i can enjoy more direct reciprocity from your end but there's no direct transaction with the tax man when you pay taxes right and especially when the when you are in a country where interest rate is very low mm -hmm. and tax rate is very high what would be your strategy does the bell ring in your head when you see the scenario does any country come in your mind when tax rates are very high when tax rates are high and the interest rates are very low you don't have to shout you can just move do some lip movement lip sync and i can see what you are trying to say it's not the good country which uh, you should you have given very controversial statement i better stop recording here and, and or i better move to the next topic okay but when we stop the recording i'll tell you which country we are talking about you have been to that country yeah best assure uh so the my my point is that you can see that who is treated preferentially by tax man and who is not treated preferentially by tax man who you think tax man is biased in favor when you see this information who you see the tax man is biased in favor of is is tax man biased in favor of the equity holders or debt holders when you see the corporate tax rate after all corporate tax goes to tax man tax authorities tax department like in finland we have vero saket in swedish i know in 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 all the countries where you different country you come from there would be some tax authority who collects tax who is tax person man uh favoring here in this example obviously debt holders they don't pay tax come on 
the corporate tax, the company, let me see how much amount Finnair is paying uh, as a tax because the units are in, uh, are in millions or what? Uh, goodness me, what, what's a unit of payments? Ah, it's in Euro millions. Finnair has paid last year 83.6 million to its debt holders. And the company has paid 18.4 million as corporate tax. Imagine if Finnair had no debt, if Finnair had no debt, all equity financed, will Finnair still pay interest? Then this 83.6 would be added here, yeah? And if Finnair still pay the same percentage of tax on profit, will taxman get more money or less money? Huh? More money because then your profit before tax is more because you're not paying to any. I, in this case, I'm not paying to these people. Basically, yes, that's the point. That's, uh, that's what I, I wanted you guys to speak. Say again. Uh, in this country where the taxes is not our uh, law. Uh, yeah, so it, it means that this question becomes even more important if you are living in a country, uh, if your company is uh, registered in a country where tax rates are very high, but the interest rate is very low, you automatically feel biased to borrow more. Because by, by borrowing more, you save a lot of money, which you could have paid to tax man. As I said, given the choice, I would pay to my uh, investor rather than the tax man. Does it make sense or not? Is it understandable, this, this rationale or not? So the idea which you now, I hope you understand is that uh, the debt servicing, uh, the financing cost are basically tax free or tax subsidized, whereas the dividend, because this is a dividend, this profit belongs to shareholders. So this dividend or this profit which belongs to, which the claim is by the shareholders of the company uh, is tax, it's after you pay tax first. As I said, you have to pay tax first. So it means that if you look at the corporate tax rate, there is an obvious, uh, bias in favor of uh, debt and there's an obvious uh, you know bias against the equity holders mm -hmm. so it means that you can alter the company value by changing your capital structure mm -hmm. sound sense uh, is it so that tax man is always against the shareholders or equity holders? I mean, this is something uh, contradictory. If I'm a tax man, tax authorities basically belong to the state, do they? And state always want more entrepreneurial activities to flourish in the economy. Do you agree? State gives so many incentives to the uh, enterprises to grow. Who is more entrepreneurial, debt holders or equity holders? Equity holders, because they are risk takers. They are, so when I say entrepreneurial, it means that if the company's profits go up, operations are good, uh, you know, more profits go, then you get more share, they get fixed share. But if the company is losing money, they still get the same percentage, the same amount, but you lose. So who is more, who has, because if you go by the Oxford dictionary or any dictionary, when you see the word entrepreneur or enterprise or entrepreneur, it means that the one who is initiating something, who has this instinct of risk taking, okay? You are more risk takers than them. So you are more entrepreneurial. 
are you the equity holders are more entrepreneurial hence the tax man should be biased in favor of uh, you guys but why why them <laughs> it's a contradiction but when it comes to your personal income taxes because you pay two taxes the one is the tax you pay on the company profits then you get the dividends from the company and then you also when this this money of dividend this dividend money goes to your personal bank accounts at the end of the year you file an personal income tax return do you then very often the tax man is giving you more concessions than them so in many cases if you are a dividend uh, if you are a equity investor you are paying corporate tax but then you are getting more benefits through the personal income tax and they they guys may, may not get that benefit from the income tax authorities basically so therefore this tax play a big role if a company uh, wants to be over levered or under levered which means more debt or less debt and if you are working not in the investment company not in the hedge fund not in the pension fund not in the mutual fund but you, if you are working in the finance department of uh, finair klm uh, microsoft um, mcdonalds kfc okay then for you this will be a major question at how you want to finance your operations do you want to have more debt or more equity mm -hmm. debt is very glamorous is very attractive huh? but then there's a more pressure uh, on the company top management because you have to pay it you can't choose not to pay but to you people the company may choose not to pay and you don't have any problem because you agree to i mean that's why you buy the equity nobody forced you to buy equity shares you bought it so it was your informed choice so it means that you are mentally prepared to get nothing are uh, in difficulties uh, now mm -hmm. because uh, there are no, no money uh, which enter. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's right. Because debt puts a lot of pressure on you. Uh, what is uh, there's a more you have to generate more uh, resources. So whereas uh, in a way, uh, in a way it's good because it makes the managers uh, disciplined, hardworking. Otherwise, I mean, would you work hard if there is no exam or any assignment pressure on you? Tell the truth. Huh? But if I give you many assignments, which I am giving around 10 tasks, okay, and exam, I'm so happy. Yeah, sorry if I sound like sadist. But um, why I do it? If I don't do it, if I make one criteria that, hey, you know what, in this course, anybody who comes, sits, listen to me, have some chat in the, in the classroom, no exam, no assignments, and then see the situation. Then I give you more job, more task to do. Which one will give you, put more discipline on you? Huh? Yeah. So the debt, if it gives a lot of pressure on the managers, and they are always very uh, skeptic to what to do, but at the same time, debt is also making the managers disciplined and accountable. If a company is having more equity than the level of accountability, the answerability of the managers would decline. So that way, the choice of debt and equity is not just a matter of corporate finance. It's also a matter of how your top managers behave. Hence, it also relates to corporate governance, how the firm is governed. And one important rule of governance is that your board of directors, especially the executive directors, including CEO, CFO, CMO, 
COO, anyone who starts with the C, all the chiefs, yeah, they should be really well behaved. They should be having their loyalty and their, um, you know, um, objective to increase the enterprise value, uh, be more loyal to shareholders and stakeholders, okay? And don't do anything which will be jeopardizing or which would be reducing uh, the company's wealth and welfare. Mm -hmm. So this is the idea, basically. Uh, today, I didn't go too much into slides. I'm, I have no regret. Uh, because it's very important that we know that why at all we are studying this topic. And don't forget these uh, names of the two gentlemen, uh, Franco Modigliani and Merton Miller. I, I want that at some stage, if you get a chance, you should be, in fact. Uh, where is the... Uh, I can write the names. And if you happen to get a chance, then please go through these people work. It's, it's very much easily available. Just go to uh, some website, for example, uh, if you, so, not wrong, this is a spelling. And then there is uh, Merton Miller. And if you go, for example, to ssrn.com. The, the L is before the hmm? uh, Modi G L E. All right. Well, anyways, that's not a, but you will find them, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you will find their work and uh, this is a very good source of information, ssrn.com, uh, Social Science Research Network, fantastic resource, and you will find tons and tons of literature. You'll be really not able to handle the amount of information you get on this website, okay? So try to read it, and when you come back next week, then we shall do more slides and more numericals, okay? So yesterday, very kind of curtain raiser, and today I'm building up the story behind this topic. And once you are comfortable with these two things, then we shall study more in details next week. And from my end, that's it for today. Okay. So any questions, comments from my uh, friends who are following us online? All right. If there's nothing, then we, we 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 can close our meeting now and wish you all the best and have a nice day and a lovely weekend. Enjoy yourself.